And now everyone, please put your hands together and give a warm welcome to your host, Pat Bishop. Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, and I wanna say a special welcome to those of you who are watching this online. So my name is Pat Bishop. I'm the Director of Graduate Studies here at Full Sail University, and I'm gonna be your host for this session, How to Create an Effective Brand, Part One. With that said, uh, we're gonna show you a real short video about Phil Palin, our guest today. We live in a world that is starving for attention. This self-obsessed culture of likes, follows, it's what makes us tick on a daily basis. We obsess over this. We spend so much energy building this facade in the digital world that I think we've forgotten who we really are. In this world where people are so focused on being something they're not, we've forgotten what branding really is and the power it has. A brand is a mark of quality, consistency, authenticity, something that people trust, that people rely on, something that fulfills you. Branding experts define the term in all different ways, when really what it is is so simple. Branding is so much energy into being something they're not. Where branding is really the art of being who you already are. All these friendly faces. Look how giant my smile is right now because I'm back here with all of you for Hall of Fame. Who's excited? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I have some of my favorite faces in this room right now. Thank you for choosing to be here with me for the next hour and a little bit. And also the people that are watching live online. I just sent out an email to all of my people. So we got all the good people tuning in right now. We are gonna be very productive over the next few minutes. Sound good? I feel like if you take the time to hang out with me today, you better get something good for it. So that's our deal. So this is, well, I'll go into detail on what we're gonna do, but this is brand new for me, right? I've, some of you are familiar with me popping up on campus, sometimes throughout the year, but also, of course, for Hall of Fame. I believe this is the fourth Hall of Fame I've been back for, and I thought, we can't do the same thing, Phil. This is the conversation, of course, I'm having with myself. I go, we can't do the same thing, the same old lecture that you've, some of you have heard before, so we're doing something brand new that I have never done, not only at Full Sail, but I've never done ever something live that will happen right on this stage over the next hour. Are you excited for this? Good. I love that enthusiasm this early in the morning. So I've been busy since I last saw you. I've been to a few places. As you know, I have a pretty good job. And actually, in this session, I'm gonna train some of you on exactly how I do this job. On Friday, I head to England, but Today, and over the next few days, I get to be here with you. Not only in this session, but around on campus and online. All of you know that I'm a very big fan of Twitter. So if at any point you, know, you want to say hello or you've got a question, make sure you find me. I'll give you the handle and the hashtag in a second. Here's what's going to happen over the next few minutes. We're going to talk specifically about positioning your brand. And once we do that, I will bring up a very special guest for about 20 minutes, half an hour. You're gonna watch us do something on stage and I'm gonna train you to do my job 
Soon I'll be out of a job because all of you are going to replace me. <laughs> so we'll do that on stage, and then at the very end, we're going to save time for questions. All of you that are in the room with me now have a little question card, so you have a few minutes to think about what it is you want to ask me or my special guests that will join us. And then, of course, if you're watching online, we'll give you the opportunity to ask a question as well. And I've got my phone in my back pocket, which I'll switch on, and I will check my tweets during question period. Of course, hashtag HOF9, and I think we're also using hashtag full sale HOF. There's a few going around. Make sure you are active. I pay attention to this, right? This is one of those sessions where you're allowed to be on your phone. I encourage it because this is your opportunity to get the answers and have those conversations that, you know, might set you up for a brand new exciting career. So here's how this is going to work. This is the first of three sessions over the next few days. Today, we're going to talk specifically about positioning your brand. If you've ever seen me speak before, you're familiar with these three stages. I work in a lot of different industries with all kinds of people all around the world. Regardless of brand, it happens in these three steps. First, we position. Then we build something to show for the brand that we're building together. And finally, and only then, do we promote your brand. So obviously, you're here right now for the position session. What's going to happen, we're going to do some work on stage. And then I have my team on hand ready right now to do some work in preparation for tomorrow. Uh, if you can be here live, that's always ideal for tomorrow's sessions. If not, you can use these links to uh, tune in to those. So the next two sessions are tomorrow, and then the first one is right now. Let's talk about this, this phrase, this term. What is your brand? Right? All kinds of experts define this term differently, and it makes it kind of confusing. Let's look at some of those definitions, shall we? This is probably my favorite one. Jeff Bezos, who is founder of Amazon, he says, your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. I tend to agree with that, right? Of course, you want to have some control over those conversations, what people are saying about you. But the fact of the matter is, people are talking about you even if you're not in the room, especially if you're not in the room. Let's look at a few other definitions of this term. Sheryl Sandberg from Facebook says, when we are packaged, we are ineffective and inauthentic. She says, I don't have a brand, but I do have a voice. Guess what? I don't like Sheryl Sandberg's definition of branding. I don't. I mean, I bet she's great but I don't like this quote at all. There's a real problem with this statement. Does anyone know? Can anyone see? Have a look at that quote. There's a very glaring problem to me. It's an assumption, a bold one, that your brand is packaged. I completely disagree with her stance here because I think branding is actually the opposite of presenting something that's packaged. And I'll clarify in just a minute. Tim Ferriss, probably someone you're familiar with if you plan to pursue entrepreneurship, he says it's about managing your name in a world of misinformation, disinformation, and semi-permanent Google records. Another definition that I love, and I'll talk about what it means, the difference of being in person and having that experience and then creating something online to show for it. Now, my definition, well, actually, let me do, of course, Gary V first. He says, developing your personal brand is key to monetizing your passion online. And I'm very thankful for Full Sail. Obviously, I was a student here, graduated 2011. I'll tell you a little bit about my story, but this is one of my favorite definitions because it directly resonates with the trajectory of my career quite literally within days of graduating. Now let's get to my definition, which combines all four of these stances. I believe 
your brand is the control that you have over your first impression. Your brand is control over your first impression. Give that some thought for a second. What I really believe is this. We here right now have the luxury of being face-to-face. I get to have conversations with you all week. I love Hall of Fame for this exact reason. You know, even if we're interacting online, right, we're still recreating that in-person experience. I believe the brand that you're building to show for yourself online most effectively recreates that in-person experience. What would we talk about if we sat down and had a coffee, right? I would learn about you. I would get content from you, information. Combined with how you deliver that, ideally in a memorable way, that's your personality. Those are the two variables that make up you. And your brand is quite simply how we communicate that, most often on the web. I'll tell you a little bit about me. Now, some of you know about me because I do come back to campus fairly often. But for those of you who don't, I'll tell you the story in a nutshell. This is me now, with lots of gray hairs in my beard. But back when I was at Full Sail, look at me, so young. This was, uh, I think, about a few months before I was set to graduate. Uh, I did entertainment business masters here on campus. I was an international student from Canada. And a few months before I was set to graduate, I entered a competition to become Charlie Sheen's social media intern. Out of 90,000 people, I made it to the top 50. And anyone who was on campus these days, not students, you weren't on campus then, but faculty will remember this, it was quite an exciting time. I was very grateful to have full sale support during this exciting, turbulent moment. The website that you see right there, by the way, I made in one of my full sale classes. Uh, yep, and then that article right there, Forget Sheen, hello Seacrest. You know, if you want to learn the whole story, Google me, baby. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep it short because really, some of you have heard this 30,000 times. So that article was the best and worst thing that happened to me. I dropped out of the Charlie Sheen competition and then I got fired by Ryan Seacrest a week before I was set to start. So quite literally, I'd moved to LA and had to figure out what the heck can I do to pay my rent before they send me back to Canada, right? And, and so what I speak on and what I share with you today on positioning your brand, I'm passionate about because this is what worked for me and it's what I've learned, not only selfishly, you know, but also in the work that I've done with a lot of interesting brands that I've built all over the world. So a few years have passed and I wrote a book and now I speak on stage, this was in Japan, and I do all kinds of fun things like pop up on TV when they need a very hard hitting quote on Kylie Jenner's lip injections. Yeah, or this, one, this was fun, this was in CNN a few months ago and I said, quote, Kylie needs to put her big girl pants on and act like an adult. And they quoted me, exactly. Now, I travel, if you follow me on Instagram, which you should, by the way, um, you'll know that I travel all over the world. All of my Hall of Fame friends are like, Phil, where were you last week? Africa. You know, where are you next week? Uh, I'm going to Berlin as of yesterday. My life's kind of exciting because in this job, I get to do it all over the world, so I take advantage of that. Really, I'm giving you this story so you can see how my brand has evolved since quite literally the day that I left. I graduated full sale and moved to LA to pursue an internship that I then got fired from before I even started. So if I can make it, so can you. And the exciting thing is, is that all of you had taken the time to sit here with me today or watch online, take some time to invest in yourself so that we can think about this before you graduate, before you get out there and have to figure out how the heck are you gonna make this work. Your brand recreates the in-person experience. Ignore all those definitions 
I gave you before, and just focus on that. The best online brand recreates the in-person experience. I do this session whenever I start working with clients called a brand audit. And back when I started, actually, I didn't have a fancy name for it. I remember the first time I did a brand audit, I was at a Starbucks. It was a friend of mine that was a real estate agent, and she said, Phil, I would really like your advice on what I should do with my website. I don't have a lot of money, but I'll give you $100. And that day, I thought I won the lottery. I was like, someone's gonna pay me $100 for advice? Okay, I like this job. <laughs> and so since very early on in, in positioning myself and building a career as a brand strategist, I figured out that you have to have something in place before I decide to work with a client, right? They need to learn a little bit about me and see that if, you know, if it's a good fit, but I also need to learn about them. And that's why my work as a brand strategist, that's why I have this mandatory session before I start working with clients and they pay for it. It's called a brand audit. So many people are so quick to invest all this time and, and money into meeting clients and doing all this work beforehand before you get paid. And I don't like that policy. So I have this session called a brand audit and it's what we do at the very, very beginning, right? I learn about you. I, before I start giving you advice on what to do with your brand and what direction to take all of this, I need to learn in detail. We spend 90 minutes together. Lauren, my colleague, is also in on that call and she and I put our heads together and go, what can we do with this person? I learn about you, you learn about me and we decide, is this a good fit? You know, I give you something, a plan that you can take action on. I don't assume that you're gonna continue working with me, but I hope you do, obviously. But we create that plan so that you have some clarity moving forward. It's really interesting that I have been able to craft a business and a brand focused on individuals. In fact, it's what makes me unique in the marketplace. When I first graduated Full Sail, moved out to LA, I was under the impression that I'd have to go work at an agency or go work for someone. So I applied, applied for a few jobs, and guess how many of those jobs I got? None of them. So again, trying to figure out how am I gonna pay rent, I thought, well, where can I focus my energy and time where maybe some other people aren't? Where is there a missed opportunity? And I noticed early on, this idea of personal branding was really starting to evolve and develop. I thought, I'm gonna help those people. Not necessarily a big corporation with lots of money and politics and drama. What about a hairstylist? Or a jewelry designer? Or a real estate agent? You know, that maybe has a small budget and really needs help to put the word out there. And that is what I've focused on ever since the beginning, and I really love that niche. But one thing that I have to be crystal clear on before I start working with a client is what their goal is, okay? What is your goal? Before I can give you any piece of advice on what to do with your website, how to build your visual identity, what social media channels you should be prioritizing, I can't really answer any of those questions until I'm crystal clear what is your goal? Strip it down into one sentence, be able to tell me what are you trying to accomplish, let's say by the end of this year, right? And so all of you here right now, spending, hanging out with me over the next few minutes, I want you to think about your answer to that question. What is your goal? Everything that we decide to do with you will come back to that. Building a plan that will help you achieve that goal. Now, I mentioned that I was doing something very unique on stage that I've never done before. That is doing this session, the brand audit, live on stage in a few minutes with a very amazing special guest that you'll learn about in a few minutes. All of you are gonna become mini fills, okay? Branded.
I brand everything. Uh, what you're gonna learn to do is read between the lines, right? So we're gonna have a conversation up here that hasn't been planned or scripted. We're gonna get real, we're gonna talk about things. And all of you are gonna play the role of me. You're gonna listen to what we're talking about, and actually by the end of this session on stage, you're gonna have a chance to weigh in on some decisions that need to be made by tomorrow. It's not a good idea. I thought of that, I'll take credit for that. So I'm training you to be mini fills. I'm training you to read between the lines, and all of you are gonna be prepared to be brand strategists. Sound good? Are you following so far? Woo! There we go, there's some excitement. So, I want to tell you about the special guest today. He is an audio expert, and he is being inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. Before I call him up on stage, I wanna play a little video so you get to meet Fernando. Hi everybody, this is Fernando Delgado from Stickman Sound. I graduated in 1997 from the Recording Arts Program. When I was younger, one of the things that I started doing is taking a look at all of the people that I was working with, and I was, okay, who is living better? And I don't mean financially, like in general, who seems to be happier and stuff like that when they show up to work, and what's the common denominator there? And it seemed like overwhelmingly the common denominator is always community. When you have a high sense of community and you're not selfish with information and stuff like that, you enjoy seeing other people succeed, helping as much as possible, the reward is so much better than what you actually give. I've never viewed my peers as my competition. I've always just view viewed them as my peers. You know, they say you're no better than the people you surround yourself with. I've just been very fortunate to surround myself with really amazing people. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Fernando Delgado. Come on up, buddy. My brother. I'm not gonna let you come up here without giving you a giant hug. Um, Good morning, everybody. This is so fun. We've literally never done this before, right? How many people have been to my sessions before and it's the same old song and dance? You know, position, build, promote. But really, this is brand new. And I have to, even before we dive into it, thank you for being my guinea pig. Thank you. You know? Um, I decided to do something different this year and that was not only show you, I talk often about not telling people your brand, but showing us what you're capable of doing, and I better walk the talk. And so I'm not only showing you this branding process by doing it live on stage, but I'm also letting you guys have a say. You'll be able to weigh in. You're actually gonna vote on something by the end of this session. So what I'm gonna do with Fernando over the next few minutes, it's unscripted, right? We've not planned. I not told you all. a tiny bit about what we're gonna do, but not too much. Uh, I am gonna do a condensed version of what I would do, Fernando, if you're a client of mine. I would try and get a sense of your goals, where you're coming from, what you're thinking about, um, what some of your challenges are. And until I have enough clarity to be able to build something to show for the brand that we've identified, that we're gonna identify today, and then develop a strategy to promote you, to get the word out there, all based on your goals. So that's Absolutely. what we're gonna do. Does everyone follow? You're good? Ready to jump in? So let's do this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, Fernando, if someone, is, it's kind of scary, right? Because you're used to being behind the scenes. And here you are with all these spotlights and Britney Spears microphone. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm good. You're good. Let's do it. You're chilling. <laughs> if some stranger came up to you and said, Fernando, who are you? And they also said, I don't have a lot of time. How would you answer that question? Who are you in a sentence or two? I'm a husband, a father, and an audio nerd. Beautiful, that's exactly what you are. What makes you tick? What do you get excited about? When you wake up and you think, I have a really great job, explain that. Uh, I love doing shows. To me, putting on a show is, it's everything. 
ever since I was in high school, I started off in theater. It was always about putting on a show. And then as I've gotten older, um, watching other people put on a show, that's amazing. Yeah. How does it feel to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, by the way? You know that's all happening this week. Uh, mm. ah! <laughs> Weird. Ah! Odd. It's exciting. Uh, and not only are you getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, you're going to have a brand new fancy brand by the end of this. I know, I'm so excited. You're welcome. <laughs> so, um, what are three things, and you can take a second to think about this question, what are three things I wouldn't know about you just by looking at you? Literally, I didn't even tell him this question before. I don't envy you. I'd I say the first thing is I... People don't think I'm very approachable, hmm. um, and I, in most cases, I think I'm very approachable. Okay. Uh, that's one. That's one. Mm. I don't know. Uh, are you left-handed or right-handed? I'm left-handed. Me too. There's one. Okay. <laughs> one more. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I don't know. I cry. I'm a crier. Really? Like a good Subaru commercial will really mess me up. <laughs> My wife loves it. She'll put on stuff specifically because she hasn't seen me cry in a while. I love that question. <laughs> see, I was going to jump in and give him another lifeline, but you just have to wait, right? And then that's something. A, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I actually ask that client often to questions, and almost always the answers are the type of things that you can put directly into your bio, for example, on your website. So many people are quick to like give us a whole you know, Bible of, well, I went to school here, and then I went here, and then I decided to pursue blah, 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 boring. How much would you love for his bio to start off with, a good Subaru commercial makes me cry? <laughs> right, it's memorable. We kind of dig for those conversational moments, and that question really helps. Another fun question. How would you describe yourself in three words? Three words. Man. Uh, serious. Okay. Not serious. Okay. Um, my kids would say angry. Mm. <laughs> so you see, um, it's, it's easier to answer that question if it's about someone else. Right away he oh, went absolutely. to, here's what my kids would say. I'm asking this question to Fernando because I've already noticed and identified that he doesn't like talking about himself. Have you noticed that? <laughs> and so that cue right there, my kids would say, it's kind of deflecting, it's almost like, oh, the spotlight's right on me. It doesn't help to also have all of these lights on. As a brand strategist, you have to ask the questions that get us thinking internally, that get us focused on ourselves. The art of branding uh, as I said in my little sizzle Hollywood trailer, never shown that before, by the way. Did you like that? Oh, no, you don't have to clap. No, this is about Fernando, not me. Why do I always do this? Take the spotlight. No. Um, what, I, what I'm always trying to do is get people like Fernando, who are nice and humble, those are the words that are in the top three, uh, to start thinking me. Take inventory of who you are right, objectively, and that's one of the hardest things for us to do. How do we take inventory of self, right, and the more aware we become of self, the better we position ourselves to brand. When I ask someone the question, describe yourself in three words, usually the first and sometimes the second are accurate. The third one is never right, ever. People have a little bit of a different perception of self than how others might describe themselves. 
And uh, I, that's why I thought it was kind of fitting that that third one you said, my kids would describe me, right? Um, lesson, you want to not only think about how you would answer that question, but also as you're building your brand, do some research. So poll five people that are close to you. How would they answer that question? Maybe poll some people that don't know you as well. How would they answer that question? It's kind of like market research and start to keep track of those answers. And you're going to notice some common threads, some words that continue to pop up. And that starts to almost quantitatively, you know, substantiate what that personal brand is, whether you know it or not. Let's get into the work that you do. Describe to me what an average day, a day in the life of Fernando, what does that look like? I guess it depends on the project. Um, one of the things that I love most about what I do for a living is I hopscotch from different genres all the time. One day I'm doing a live sporting event, the next day I'm shooting a reality show or a commercial or doing second unit in a movie or something like that. So it just really depends. And then when I'm not working, I'm either with my family or I'm, I'm in my shop. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the bubble that I live in. Mm -hmm. Great answer. So right away I'm listening for visual opportunities. Fernando's describing an average day. I want to see you in that shop. I want to see you working. Don't worry, we will. We'll see it. Um, what are some of the exciting parts of your job? What are the parts of your work that you absolutely love? The people, for one. I love being around creative people. I love putting on a show. So, and I think that's one of the things that makes it easy for me to hop around into different genres. I'm, I'm not a sports fan. I don't have any sports team that I go crazy over like a lot of people do, but I love putting on a sports show. So, um, to me, life is, is a show. That's cool. Cool sound bite. Write that down, someone. <laughs> now let's switch things and talk about some of the challenges. Every job, and as you hang out with Hall of Famers this year, I know it's easy to kind of look at their successes and their careers on the highlights and go, wow, they must have it easy. But in fact, anyone who's graduated is out in the working world knows there's a lot of hustle, there are challenges. What have some of those challenges been? Um. Well, when I first started my career, the challenge was actually knowing what my responsibilities even were. Because it's one thing to go to school and get concepts, but it's something completely different to actually show up on set every day when you're working with different people who have different expectations and to be able to navigate that. So I feel like the first part of my career, you know, maybe the, the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, which is the majority of my career actually, it was more figuring out what my responsibilities were when I stepped on set every single day. Now that's the easy part. Like that's, I can knock that out of the park every day. Not worried about that. Now it's about navigating the people and personalities. And I've done a lot of supervising and, and having to make decisions that sometimes cause your clients to say, bye-bye, uh, you know, because of X, Y, or Z. So that's happened. I've lost some clients because of me standing my ground on something that I thought was important. Yeah. So, and that's been really difficult because when you do something like that, a lot of times it has zeros on the end of it. Mm -hmm. And I've got payroll. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, I want to actually play a clip. Um, uh, I just launched a new podcast and Today, Fernando is the guest on that podcast. I'll give you the link after I'm done chatting with Fernando. But I want to play a clip from that this week. Uh, it's a soundbite connected to ex that exact thought that I think is important for people to hear. I guess my goals are to reestablish some of my old relationships that had kind of fallen to the wayside over the years with some of the clients that I really enjoyed working with and just establishing uh, new clients. 
Okay, so remember we talked about reading between the lines? When I heard you say this, we were on the phone together, um, I heard that and that was when my brain kicked into read between the lines mode. What does that mean? Let's elaborate on that thought. Re-establish relationships that have fallen to the wayside over years. What's the thought behind that? Okay, well, I've been a freelancer for almost 20 years now. And to me, that freelance is independence in a lot of ways, you would think. But if you work with a client that loves you so much that other clients that love you don't get to have you, well, another person is going to roll in and fill that spot. And so I was on a show for seven years. I had a moral disagreement with the new management that took over the show, and I lost a big contract. And last year, I thought we were going to go out of business. So last year for me, and a lot of this year as well, is about reconnecting with a lot of those people that I haven't seen over the last seven, eight years. They're still working, they've moved on to bigger and better things, and so now it's my responsibility to get back to the hustle that I had before I landed the big contract so that I can reestablish some of those relationships and hopefully build some new friendships that lead to bigger and better. Great, thanks for keeping it real. Yeah. Uh, Fernando is doing something very important right now, which as brand strategists, we strive to arrive at this moment, and it's not always quite this easy, but you're revealing, you're being honest, you're giving us details. It's kind of vulnerable to go, especially to come back to Hall of Fame, you know, where you're in being inducted, but to have that kind of realness and say, here's some of those challenges. I connect with you, and actually, I'm gonna play another sound bite where I'm like, amen. I was in the same position very right. recently. Um, but we're listening for these opportunities. So here's, Here's what I've heard and what I'm excited about. Well, first, let me ask a question. How important are you, your company is called Stickman Sound, how important are you within the company in terms of the motivation on why people do business with you? What is that role that you play? How important are you in the mix? I think for the first 10 years that we were in business, it was critical that I was present. But uh, Crystal, who runs my office, and Marcus, who runs all the gear and everything, I went to high school with these people. We know each other and love each other. And um, they've been working with me for so long that they answer better than I would. Mm -hmm. So I just actually realized very recently that I own my company and that my company doesn't own me. Mm. Because right now, they're at home doing the deed. There's people working. There's stuff going on. And I get to hang out with you guys. So that's pretty cool. But it doesn't mean that I don't have to hustle. Yep. Because if, if I'm not kind of leading the charge, things could get stale. Because that's what happens when leadership yep. fails. Here's what I'm excited about. Um, I believe that a lot of your clients do business with your company because of you. Because of your positivity. That's one of the words that I would use to describe you. If I was answering the question, what are the three words, right? You're a positive, nice guy that people want to be around. I see an opportunity. <laughs> I see an opportunity for you to build a personal brand that stems from Stickman Sound, right? As a company and working in production, you wouldn't necessarily name your company after you. That's definitely not something you would do. But there's real magic and opportunity here to position a personal brand that stems from that, that really kind of makes your role and your perspective that's informed so much of the, the, the corporate cu culture, not even corporate, but the culture of your company. I see an opportunity here for Fernando to build a personal brand. The goal is to reestablish relationships, right? New and old. Go back and reconnect with some of these people by formalizing a personal brand, right? Something new that gives you 
something to talk about, right, when you go back and rekindle these relationships. Um, I want to I wanna, um, move on to another soundbite that we'll elaborate on, just like we did, where I see this, look at you trying to look at my notes, where I see this personal brand being focused slightly differently than the company. What, and you can answer this question pretty efficiently, but what, what are the types of projects that Stickman Sound does? Uh, we'll do anything from um, supplying equipment and manpower for a, a commercial where it's just a one-man sound team. <laughs> team, it's one person. Um, or outfitting, like the biggest show I did, we shot a movie for EDC one year and I had 40 plus crew members. Wow. Yeah, it was insane, it was awesome. Pasties, oh my God. <laughs> um, so I'm excited about positioning you in a way that's gonna allow you to grow, prepare you, when you start that outreach to those relationships to have something ready to offer and to formalize ways in which people can work with you. That's all branding. That's just organization and branding. Let's play another clip from the, um, when I recorded with Fernando for my podcast episode. This was another clip that stood out to me. So we talked about reestablishing relationships, opportunities to make money. Here's Last year, I guess it was actually the year before, I lost my biggest client. And I didn't realize how, I guess, dependent I had become. Please elaborate. I did two eight-week shows a year, minimum, for seven years. That client kept me very busy. And, and I was able to put uh, 12 people to work alongside me for seven years. So it had just become routine. And at the beginning of that contract, in between seasons, I would leave town or I'd go pick up a job someplace else and I continued to work for all of those other clients. But towards the end of that relationship, I wasn't doing that. I was hanging out at home and enjoying my family a little bit more and I kind of become a little bit complacent. So when, when that, call came in that they were going with somebody else the subsequent season, which I probably wouldn't have taken it anyway had the same management been there, to be honest. However, that, that hurt, and we were really worried, really up until the beginning of this year, that we were going to go out of business. And then we realized, oh, we're still here. Okay, cool. We didn't have to lay anybody off. I had to cut back on my salary, but that was it. So, you know, personal lifestyle kind of went down a little bit, but that's fine. And, uh, and so now we're rebuilding. Yeah, rebuilding. Uh, you also, we talked about this in the podcast episode, but you uh, opened up a store, a retail aspect of your business in terms of wanting to diversify your offerings, right? Can you right. tell us a little bit about that so they have context? Yeah, well, one of the things that we've started to really realize is that that was a single revenue source, and, and I've known this my entire career. The, the business goes up, it goes down, it's feast or famine, so um, we just started really looking at our brand as a company, and I had kind of become this person that a lot of my peers would call and say, hey, what should I be buying? You know, do you like this piece of equipment? Do you like that piece of equipment? This is what I'm trying to do. This is the work that I mostly do. And I'm, I'm advising all these people, and then they're going elsewhere to purchase their equipment. So we decided to use all the relationships with the manufacturers, because I'm a nerd and I have no problem calling up a manufacturer and saying, hey, this piece of equipment needs attention, or this is great, right? So I took all those relationships, we opened dealer, we got our dealerships for all of those manufacturers that we already use. Um, and I guess it was at the end of last year, November, October, November, we opened an online store. And so the goal this year is to focus on that and to kind of build that. So I am listening for those cues 
those opportunities where we can even further diversify Fernando services. Uh, when I'm meeting with clients and I'm doing this exact session, there's a lot of focus on typically one solid revenue stream. I'm guilty of this. Uh, but as a brand strategist, a lot of times you're thinking, what else can this person do to create that business cushion, right? Where you're not becoming so, uh, having to rely on one thing. Because if that ever becomes disrupted, it can be very stressful. Yep. So there's a few things I'm excited about here. Uh, I'm letting you into my brain here, because I know you're all probably thinking this as well, because you're all mini brand strategists, correct? Yes. Okay, good, we're on the same page. I'm excited about Fernando having a personal brand that humanizes the brand. He said it's not so much about him, but in fact it is. The corporate or the company culture that he's created stems from your values, your ideas, your positivity. Sure, there are other people a part of the team that are help executing that, but that starts with you. The second thing that I'm excited about is creating not just one other revenue stream, online store, but something more that would be incorporated with that personal brand that's gonna be a little bit new and a little bit exciting, something you haven't done before, but something that, you know, me on the outside, it's very easy, it's glaring to me what that opportunity is. I wanna play the last soundbite from our conversation uh, last week and this gives a clue into what that opportunity is. I don't necessarily care if I'm the person working on the production, but I like the idea of building a system for a client. And then whether it's their sound person or one of our sound people or myself going out and executing it and it, it all happens. That's really what I enjoy doing. That's really what I enjoy doing. That is really what I enjoy yeah. doing. When I hear that, that's like the switch. That's like, hello, like blinking sign. When someone says, this is what I love, this is what I enjoy, every single person's brand should stem from that passion, that opportunity to do something you love to do. Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, what it is you really enjoy doing? I just enjoy building the show, building the systems, putting the right people in place. Um, Sometimes that's me, but it's more because of a comfort thing for the client than it is an actual ability thing. I actually think some of the guys that we've brought up over the years can mix a show a lot better than I can. But, you know, and we all have our various strengths too, so I guess depending on the type of system, we get the right people in place, and then just make the show happen. You know, at the end of the day, I feel like our, our goal is to make it so that the production can be like, we didn't have to deal with sound. You know, production managers and production people in general have a million people barking at them all day long. Their phones are going off all day long. So our goal really is to build a system so that we can run a seamless show so that they don't need to worry about anything. And then at the end of the show, we party. Are you getting paid to build those systems right now? Yeah. Kind of. Most of the time. Most of the time. Is there an opportunity to, to solidify that, that strategic part of what you do very well? Sure, others can mix maybe better than you, but having been in this role and having done the work and the time that you've spent on set, you know how to build systems. Right? I do. And others could learn from you how to build those systems. They are. They are. They already are. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So what I'm most excited about from this conversation is presenting Fernando in a strategic role. Again, probably due to his humility and humbleness, probably wouldn't take the step to formalize this until I tell you this is what you need to do. But Fernando, there's a, there's a consultant aspect to this. There's a strategic part that is part of Fernando's core competency, what you do really well. You do it 
better than other people. That, to me, in listening to this, is the opportunity that exists here to build that new vertical or that slight repositioning as part of that personal brand that people are really going to resonate with. Really controlling your personal brand is just communicating exactly who you are and why people should care. How do you kind of receive that? Is it exciting to kind of formalize that strategy? Oh, absolutely. I've, I've wanted, I've actually had that in my brain for years. It's just communicating it. Yeah. And, and because it's not something that's very common in our area of the business, but it's something that's desperately needed, in my opinion, from a lot of my clients. So, um, it would, but it's been a matter of, how do you communicate this? I'm a sound guy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exciting to hear. You know, that's not something that exists within the industry. Some people might think, might take that as a negative, but I hear that and go, yes, that's our opportunity to build something different. Right. And what's great about different? It's memorable. Right? I just told this story before I had you up on stage, but when I started my career, I could have gone and worked at an agency and worked with corporate clients like car brands and worked for someone else, but I was like, what about all the small people that need help? A lot of people didn't take the initiative, probably because it doesn't pay as well, but to focus a business on that. When you position yourself to fill in those cracks, you're gonna arrive at success much faster. You're taking the steps, making the moves, Right, to build something that's different, to build something that's memorable. When you can satisfy a need, like every good business does, right? Not just wants, people don't spend money on wants. We in our minds have to convince ourselves that this is something we need, so we buy it, a product or a service. When we can, as personal brands, as businesses, satisfy a need, that's when you position yourself for success. And don't be afraid to do something slightly different. Wow, we've learned a lot about Fernando in a few minutes, haven't we? I've learned a lot about Fernando in the last few minutes. <laughs> Good. So I'm really excited about a few things from this conversation. I'm excited about Fernando reestablishing old relationships, but it's very important to me that he feels equipped to not only rekindle the old relationships, but also take on new business, right? To actually communicate these things, communicate the value to new prospects right away so they, they see what's in it for them. Finally, I'm most excited about taking Fernando, building a personal brand that stems from the company, right? To humanize the brand and build in a strategic element. The best part about this is the fact that Fernando's excited about it. Yeah, yeah. And when you're excited about something, you invest time and effort and money into it, and that is exactly what you want. So again, this is normally a much longer conversation, but we just did the show version. You like a show? Yeah, yeah. So that's what we've done. And hopefully you guys have been listening to hear um, what some of those opportunities are. I played the clips the phone clips because I got for this, this only prep we've done for this. We had a little bit of a conversation, so I knew what we were getting into to be able to condense it. But here is the conclusion that I drew along with my colleague, Lauren. We decided that this new vertical, this new prospect for Fernando's personal brand that we are all going to build together, we love the idea of you being an audio consultant for producers. That sounds cool. <laughs> any, any first reactions and thoughts to this? I love the four producers. Can't be everything to everyone. When you're everything to everyone, you effectively appeal to no one. So we isolate a very specific audience that from that conversation, we identified. Producers need help, and they're willing to pay for it. Boy, do they. Expand awesome. on that thought. What do they need help with? They need help with everything. I mean, at the end of the day, the producers are managers. And what makes a really good manager is hiring really good people. So they don't have to understand everything. But if they want to have like a broad strokes understanding, they bring in somebody that's amazing at their job 
and that person can give them the broad strokes and then go and execute all the fine details. That's, at the end of the day, that's the key to any good manager, not just a producer. But a good producer understands that. Are you pumped? I'm super pumped. I'm super pumped. Can you tell? Are you pumped? So I want to tell you, we had this conversation with Fernando. We just launched this episode today. You're the second official episode of Brand Therapy. So we just launched a new podcast. Uh, I couldn't come up on stage and not promote it, but we don't have time. I don't have time to play it, obviously, today. I think it's about half an hour. And it goes into more detail in this conversation we've had today. So I encourage all of you to check this out. Take a picture of this slide, screenshot it, do whatever you need to do. Go back and listen to this conversation that both Lauren, uh, who works with me. Um, Hi, Lauren. <laughs> she's actually uploading to my Instagram right now. It's something very exciting. The other thing that I'm going to ask you to do, uh, obviously go listen to the episode. It's, it's on iTunes, uh, and it's also on my website, my brand new website, philpallon.expert. Click podcast, and we actually have notes from the episode and a really cool downloadable worksheet that's based on everything we talk about. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do since this is brand new. If you take the time to go to the iTunes store and leave a review, five stars, say something nice, come and find me on campus, and I will give you a prize. Do you want something for free? Woo! The reason I'm asking you to do this is because it helps, because it's brand new. It's only two weeks old. It helps new people find it. So free stuff, just leave a review on iTunes. You have to prove it to me as well. So come and find me on campus, and I'll give you some swag. OK, now the thing that I'm most excited about. You've been sitting here eavesdropping on this conversation because you're all brand strategists, correct? Correct. I'm glad we're on the same page. Now, I'm going to be asking for your opinion on something, and it's really important. I mentioned that I have my team in place. It's going to be a very long night tonight. We are in place to build something to show for what we've talked about today, tomorrow. It's kind of like a restaurant. So we have a little bit of prep done, but there's a lot of things that need to be cooked fresh to deliver it tomorrow. Have you seen anything, any of the prep? No, Lauren wouldn't share. <laughs> yeah, you tried to go to my business partner and get, the, uh, get a I, sneak peek. And was I that successful? I checked in once. And no, she said Correct. <laughs> she swore to secrecy. Yeah, so I sent a photographer to Las Vegas to photograph Fernando so that by tomorrow, and you're going to be here for this, we would present new photography, a new brand identity, and a new website that will all be based on this conversation that we had together today. But here's what I need your input on. You're going to go to my Instagram right now, and you're going to vote on something. I'm serious. Pull out your phones and get ready. Do I get to vote? You don't get to vote. Well, sure, you, get, you only get one vote, though. There's going to be a lot more than that. <laughs> yeah, sure, you can vote. You've been such a good sport, you can vote. All right. So, the first question that I need your input on, this feels like a game show, doesn't it? You have to, like, vote. Uh, first question, what should Fernando's brand sentence be? And I've prepared two options for you. Option number one, audio expert who makes life easier on set, producers, I hear you. Get it? It's like cute. <laughs> so that's option number one for your brand sentence. You've heard me talk about brand sentence before, right? It's not telling me in a paragraph who you are and why I should care, because no one's going to listen for that long. We have the attention span of like three seconds or less. You have to be able to condense your brand. Who are you and why should I care? Into one sentence. So we have two options. That's the first one. Second option, Emmy award-winning audio consultant and owner of Stickman Sound, making audio processes a breeze, one set at a time. OK? That's your second option for Fernando's brand sentence. I want you to vote up or down. Go to my Instagram, at Phil Palin, and this is there right now for you to be able to cast your vote. Question number two. This is the final question I need your input on so that I can build the brand that we will unveil tomorrow. I'm so excited. It's nuts. Number two, what should Fernando's brand's 
visual mood be? Should it be clean and modern, or should it be playful and eccentric? Should it be clean and modern, or playful and eccentric? You have to choose one of those. I'll be watching the votes today so that I can, based on what people vote for the most, design the brand accordingly overnight so that we will unveil it tomorrow. So if you're in this room, you should have voted by now. Pull out your phones. If you're watching online, you also can go and vote. Now I'm going to open up the floor to some questions. I will also, I turn my phone on, off, in case it would make sounds. I'm gonna turn my phone on and I'll also watch on Twitter. And I know we're gonna move around the room uh, to take some questions for me and or for Fernando. Any question as it relates to positioning your brand, anything we've talked about today? Lively group. <laughs> Where should we start? Over this here? gentleman right in the front. Uh, okay, we're gonna start back here. Hey, Phil. Hey, Joe. So, what channels would you recommend for Fernando? Um, I'm going to talk about that in session three. Promote. So I'll 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 skim on the concept without giving it away tomorrow, because uh, we got a whole session dedicated to that, baby. Uh, when it comes to promoting your brand, particularly for personal brands, you've heard me say this before, rather than being average on 10 platforms, I want Fernando to be really good at three. And the three that we choose for Fernando are not necessarily going to be the three that we choose for you. Because there's a good chance that Fernando's audience is different than yours. And for years, I've been saying, focus on three. And actually, Joe, I would even say, now, I, I might even say one or two, because three is even hard to do really well as an individual. But nowadays, it is so much more important for you to be really good at one or two, maybe three, than it is to be average, just active on all of them. That's not going to help you actually make ripples in, in whatever channels and audiences you're trying to grow. Do you have any initial thoughts on social media platforms? No. Don't worry, I'm going to help you. I'm not actually going to tell you what his three are going to be, but I already know. I've already in my mind. I have to think about it a little bit more today. But tomorrow, uh, I think at 2 p.m. Eastern, we have a whole session dedicated to promoting your brand, so I don't want to give it away. Otherwise, you wouldn't come tomorrow. Hello? Can't give it all away. Next question. I can't really see, so I trust the, the roving microphones. Right over here. Um, I was going to ask, what does Hootsuite and Instagram play in the realm of branding? branding? Um, what did you say, Hootsuite, and what was the other one? Instagram. Instagram. Oh, yeah, great. So these are the platforms, and these are some of the tools that we use to facilitate those platforms. So uh, Hootsuite is a common one for scheduling your social media content, looking at analytics, they've got all kinds of features. Hootsuite, Buffer, I mean for Instagram, there's all kinds of apps and tools, third-party tools like Preview, Later, uh, Iconosquare, Planoly. Uh, these are all tools that I try and test all the time because I nerd out about this. But essentially, you've got the platform, so your social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Google+, don't worry, no one goes on that one. <laughs> Snapchat, you know, no one goes on that one anymore either. Um, I'll actually talk about Instagram in, in a lot of detail tomorrow because I think of Instagram as three social media platforms, not just one. They've been very smart to keep us addicted to that app. I think they're actually there's actually three distinct channels on that platform. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, Hootsuite is just one of those tools that you can use to help manage your social life. Uh, nowadays, you can't keep up with all of this stuff real time. Even the Instagram I posted one hour 
before this session, I planned yesterday, knowing full well that I'd be running around saying, put makeup on my forehead so it's not greasy before I get up on stage instead of posting on Instagram. So really, the art is once you identify the, the priority platforms for where your audience is, it's figuring out what tools you can plug in to facilitate and complement those efforts so that you don't become a Twitter quitter, for example. You know, you actually build a system that will allow you not necessarily to worry about what you need to post today, but already be thinking two weeks in advance. My tweets are, are already written for the next two weeks. Now, that's not to say I don't jump on every day and interact with people for a few minutes. If people take the time to interact with what I post, then I make sure I show them some love and favorite or reply. But I don't post my tweets real time every day. I used to, but then if that's my responsibility, it won't get done. Uh, yep. So yeah, that's kind of, again, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into some of the mechanics of how to set those up. The third session, all about promoting your brand, I'm leaving the format to be very much a QA and a so that we can get into a discussion based on what questions you have. Great question, though. Thank you for asking. Next. Who's next? Great. We're over here. Are we? Over here. Over here. Um, so, my name is Joseph Gill, I'm in the game development program, so it's hard for me to understand with a lot of my friends being artists, they can have their portfolios as a digital website that they can show. As a developer, it's hard for me to be able to show my work in progress. Is there any recommendations you would have for that? That's a really good question. That's a really, really good question. I'm glad you asked it because by asking it means you're already starting to think, how can I build something to show? for the work that I do rather than just tell people. There's so much power in showing someone something that they need beyond just saying, I develop things. That doesn't help me. We can probably relate to this, right? But I can absolutely relate to it. I have a million things that I've recorded and if I put it on a website, there's no context. So it's always been a challenge for me uh, because most clients won't give you the permission to use their material. So and then on I the flip you. side of that, being in a position where we are to actually hire students, ideally from Full Sail, hire recent grads, uh, a lot of times, you know, we love to hear about your goals and aspirations, but what we really need is someone to fill a role now, <laughs> you know, right. not a month from now. It's really like, I have an immediate need in my business. How can you position that portfolio to fill that need that we need right away? My answer isn't great because there really isn't one set concrete answer. What I would say to you is get creative with what you build so that it's memorable because your potential employers or gatekeepers that are deciding, do I hire him or do I hire a hundred other people that have applied for this position. My goal is to tell you to do something that's gonna make me remember you instead of the others. The good news is that the others most likely aren't going to inject a whole lot of creativity, especially if they're developers. No offense. <laughs> but you know they're not gonna take the step to really be creative with what they show. Uh, I'm thinking of it, uh, I can't remember his name, um, I'll see if it comes to me, but, but I've seen portfolios that st stick out in my mind um, when people are able to show some creativity, whether it's a, an overarching theme as part of your brand, a certain focus, a certain perspective, a certain standpoint, whatever it is, whatever it is you build, make sure it's different than what other people are submitting. Even ask around in your class, let's see your portfolio, how have you shown all of this? Then strive to make it better and make it different. You know, um, So I don't have an exa exact answer. If I told you exactly what to do, then everyone else would go and do it. I think it's gonna, again, come back to your brand, which is two parts, the content of what you show, the mechanical part that tells us, oh, you can deliver what we need, but the opportunity is the personality, the creativity, the way that you do it, the way that you communicate it is gonna be 
absolutely, completely unique to just you, and that's your opportunity to stand out. So I kind of answered your question, but also kind of didn't on purpose. <laughs> Good. Good, great question. Hello, we have a question from YouTube. Wonderful. Um, Michael is a course director for Creative Writing Masters here at Full Sail, and he wants to know, what's the one thing people can do to increase awareness among uh, people who don't follow their brand online or, or know about their brand at all? Okay, what is the one thing you can do to increase awareness? So I'm assuming Michael is, well, I don't know, actually. It could be building something from scratch or it could be taking an existing brand and, and, and revamping it. What I think the most important thing for you to do in both situations, you could be building something from scratch. Michael might have an existing brand, right, that you're revamping. The most important thing is to take inventory of exactly how your brand has evolved in real life, right? And make sure you responsibly communicate that on the web. And let's actually maybe give them, let's maybe give them, a, I'll give them an example and then I might get you to give an example, Fernando, of that kind of evolution now that we've been out for a few years. Mine is kind of funny. It's actually super embarrassing. But I'm going to tell the story. When I graduated Full Sail, the reason I focused on branding was because it was in entertainment business masters, it was my favorite course. I loved putting together keynotes, clearly. Uh, I feel like Beyonce, I put all kinds of graphics back there and then, you know, a little concert. <laughs> but I loved making pretty things. And I liked, I, I just love branding. So I thought, well, I should build something to show for this. I had no idea what to call myself or a job title. So what's unique to my career trajectory is that I never worked for a company. I only ever worked for myself. I didn't get to be in the corporate world and fuss over job titles. Job titles meant nothing to me. What meant, the only thing that mattered to me was a paycheck for the work that I enjoyed doing so that I could pay my rent, not job title. So I was really confused and I called myself when I thought, oh, I'm filling in my LinkedIn profile, I guess I need a job title, I called myself, this is so embarrassing, I called myself a social media designer. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> I thought it was such a good idea at the time, and now I look back on it and go, oh, you know, it's so actually, when I wanted to create a visual brand for myself, my gift, to myself after my first successful year in business, surviving out in LA and not becoming bankrupt and being sent back to Canada. <laughs> um, my gift to myself was to hire a small boutique branding agency that I had been following and been really inspired by. I hired them to design my logo. And what was more important than the artwork that they gave me that I paid uh, a lot of money for at that time the most important thing I got from that, they said to me casually at the end of one conversation before we hung up, they said, Phil, why do you call yourself a social media designer? I feel like you're a brand strategist. And I was, it's kind of that moment where like, it's so obvious, you're like, why didn't I think of that? But by hearing it from someone else, it completely validates it. Right. It almost gives you the permission to own that. And that is how I started using the title brand strategist. That's an example of that evolution that happened in real life that you must take inventory of and evolve that brand online. Do not have the same website you've had for five years. If it has not changed, why on earth do you think I'm gonna keep coming back and looking at it? You evolve, whether you like it or not, you evolve in real life, that same evolution has to happen online. Do you have any kind of example of that kind of evolution when you look back and go, oh my God, to where you are now? Yeah, I mean, uh, originally I just bought equipment because I thought it was important to invest in my craft and I, need, it, I knew the guys that owned gear made a little bit more money and that was just kind of it. And now I have a 2,500 square foot warehouse full of gear and that's kind of a trip like we, 
we moved out of the spare bedroom because my brother moved in for a little while when he got out of the service, and then we moved out of the garage because we were just tired of having people over at the house at all these crazy <laughs> hours. And so we've had three different shops, and we've kind of slowly grown. And the thing that we've really started, that I've started to realize is that we're experts. When people ask us questions, nine times out of 10, we have the answer. And if we don't, we know the person that does. Yeah. So um, that's, that's been the craziest part. Yeah. You start off not knowing anything at all, and then you wake up one day and you're like, oh man. All of this happened. I'm pretty comfortable with this. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun to be in the position to look back, and all of you will soon be in that position. Um, thank you for sharing that. Also, thank can you, you do me a favor me. and just give Fernando a round of applause for being so awesome today? Thank you. Oh boy, we have an exciting few days ahead of us. I'm excited. I know that a few of you have more questions. We're short on time, so I wanna wrap it up. Also remember, I've given you question cards. If you're here in the room, I've given you question cards that we're actually gonna collect now. If you've taken the time to ask me a question, I promise I will respond to all of them. Not overnight, I'm a busy guy, as you know, on campus, but I will get back to you. And remember to listen to the podcast episode with Fernando and leave me a review so that more people find it. And if you take the time to do this, come find me on stage. I have a prize for you. Thank you all for hanging out this morning. Thank you. And I will see you back for tomorrow's sessions, Build and Promote, 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, so thank you again to Phil and Fernando for sharing so much valuable information with us. Have a great Hall of Fame day, everyone.